Which is more absurd, believing the Earth is flat or that the Earth is only 10,000 years old? Ooh. Oh, come on. How is this? How is this even a matchup? Area 51 just rocks compared to that one. That guy's actually like 30, and he's like a pro. The third annual... Today's conversation is with Jerry Williams, a.k.a. Greater Sapien. Jerry is a popular and veteran YouTuber known for debunking all kinds of conspiracies, including Flat Earth, as well as sharing his perspective on politics and current events. Whatever you do, make sure you stick around and check out the conspiracy elimination bracket. Basically, I chose 16 of my favorite conspiracies to go head to head. Which came out on top? You'll have to stay tuned to find out. Big thank you to Jerry for the conversation. If you're not already subscribed, you're missing out. I highly recommend checking out his channel. There will be a link in the description below. As always, if you enjoy these kinds of conversations and want to see more like this, let me know by hitting those like and subscribe buttons. All right, intro over. Now on to my conversation with Greater Sapien. What's up, everyone? I'm back and joined today by the man with the best video outro on YouTube, Jerry Williams, a.k.a. Greater Sapien. Jerry, once again, thanks for joining me today. My pleasure. All right, Jerry. There are a lot of people to trigger and not a lot of time, so let's get started. <laughs> to trigger. <laughs> First question for you, which is more absurd, believing the Earth is flat or that the Earth is only 10,000 years old? Ooh. Uh, I'm flat. Uh, yeah, I, you know. I, I think believing the Earth is flat is more absurd because there's just too much uh, personal experience that people have that, you know, you can always speculate about what happened way back when. You know, it's history. Were you there? Were you, do you know what happened that long ago? But right here, right now, uh, there's too many people experiencing the Earth the way it is. Uh, so I just have to, yeah, flat, flat is is more outrageous, though they are very much intertwined, I believe. I think you're right. I, I tend to agree with that because you can't, there are experiments that you can, basically anyone can do to prove the, the Earth is a globe. And I think proving the age of the Earth would be a little trickier. So, Yeah, I think it requires a little more, exp a little more expertise. Um, yeah. And then once you start getting to that, you start getting into, you know, the concept of there being, you know, like isolated pockets of knowledge and people covering things up and there's more mm -hmm. inroads to uh, just not believing the evidence uh, that's being shown to you. Uh, but uh, earth being flat, I mean, come on guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> we might've triggered a few people there, but let's go for big air. Note that this came from a comment from that same video with MC tune, likely because he's a religious person. One of what seems like very few among the debunking or globe community. Anyway, question is a belief that the miracle stories described in the Bible actually happened more or less absurd than believing the flat earth. Uh, believing they actually happened. Uh, mm -hmm. it's more or less absurd, man. We're getting into the, we're getting into the minutia of absurdity here. Uh, yeah, the miracles. I don't, I don't recall all the miracles that happened in the Bible. Uh, but Ooh. virgin birth, resurrection. Yeah, yeah, virgin birth. Yeah. It's like, yeah, those are pretty, they're pretty absurd. So I mean, there's this cornerstone of Christianity. Yeah. <laughs> they're pretty absurd. You know, they can be dismissed as kind of anecdotal, you know, misunderstandings to, you know, so there could be like a grain of truth in some of these that have just been completely blown up by, by the mythology. Yes, the mythology. Uh, but, uh, oof. <laughs> That's a tough one. I, I, I saw I know. I, that, yeah. I, that was a good question by my, one of my commenters. That was yeah, like, that, oh, that's, a, that's a tough one. I, I, yeah. I mean, they're, they're, they're fighting over the remote, man. Those guys are, <laughs> they, 
they are Ugh. they are they are neck and neck on that one but there are so many more christians than flat earthers yeah 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 uh I th- uh, yeah those the 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 miracles are no i'm sorry we just we just <laughs> we just know too much about the goddamn earth <laughs> we just do we just do yeah i'm still going with i'm still going with flat earth i think wow okay yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, it's it's so it's so close though, it's so close. Um, I mean, the, yeah, I'm still I'm still going with it. I mean, the, re- the resurrection, for example, what laws of science does that violate? I'm tempted to say all of them. Yeah, maybe he came back, but he wasn't really dead. They just didn't have a really good way of telling back then because they were ignorant fools. <laughs> that does happen. Yeah, I mean, no, no, no. Yeah, even now. But the, but whether that's <laughs> actual miracle versus something happened. That was interpreted as right. a miracle. Yeah. That That's is, the only reason I've given them some slack. That's like the only reason. Because it's all just, it's all just nonsense. Sorry, mom, but it is. <laughs> as I was saying, let's take it down a notch. Give everyone a chance to finish telling us off in the comments. <laughs> You've been doing this, by this, I mean YouTube and creating videos for almost 14 years now. Now, granted, you've taken a couple of breaks and we can get into that, but you, nearly 500 videos and you don't just address flat earth, you cover all kinds of conspiracies, conspiracy theorists and science deniers and politics and comics and movie reviews. Do you have a favorite topic or type of video to make? Uh, honestly, I would like to talk more about uh, just nonsense pop culture stuff. You know, uh, just I would like to to have a little more fun with things uh so yeah um so just geeking out on stuff is actually something i i prefer uh but i usually i like i don't the problem is with that is i don't like just talking to the void when it comes to that you know like i'm gonna make a video and i'm just gonna gonna just talk about comics and i like to bounce things off of you know my friends or something when it comes to that kind of thing and so uh so this format for me kind of works more for declarative things like this is my opinion on something and it's like, you know, or I'm teaching you something. Uh, but given, given my druthers to use an old ass phrase, uh, I would, yeah, just like comics, entertainment, uh, movies, you know, fun stuff. Yeah. I mean, the science and the, the debunking, I guess, is fun for a while. It seems to get old also because, as you said, you hear the same thing over and over, and it's yeah. And I, I go, I, you know, I, I go in bursts on this, but I, I, it's, it's an exercise for me. You know, that's one thing about doing the science is when you teach, when you teach somebody something, or when you have to explain some something to someone, you find out how much you know and how much you don't know. And that's the fun thing I find interesting is to say how, okay, I, I know this is true. I know this is a fact, but how do I explain it to someone in a way that's not just this intuitive knowledge that I have? How do I turn that into words? Um, and in order to turn that into words, you actually have to, you have to explore how much you actually know it as opposed to just like, I feel it. I, 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 you know, you, you learn a lot of stuff in school over time, and after a while, it just becomes what you know and why you even know it. You don't even know why you know it. That's just the way that is. Uh, it just becomes part of your DNA. It becomes part of your bones. And so there is a, a, a stimulus that I get from the science and the, the conspiracy stuff uh, because I have to figure out where it sits with me in order to be able to explain it to you. And so that's, that's, that's one thing that keeps it from being completely boring. Um, and then it gets to a point and I'm like, okay, I, I, okay, now I'm bored again. And so I need to, don't need to stop. But, uh, that's the one thing that keeps it from being completely boring. As I mentioned, you've been posting videos for nearly 14 years going on 14 years. And because your content goes so far back and this may sound a little corny, but hopefully it'll make sense watching some of your videos from three years, five years, eight years ago, is kind of like, at least for me, opening a time capsule or having a time machine. Because I just recently watched some of the older videos. I've been keeping up with the new ones as they come out, but I went back and watched some of the older ones to prepare for this. And now I'm talking with you and it's suddenly five or eight years later. 
And so <laughs> it's like, like overnight. And my point is, I want to remind you of some of the things you said all those years ago, and we'd love to hear you reflect on them. And in some cases, see if you still feel the same way or oh, I like that. your thoughts have changed. Sound good? Uh, yeah, I like that. Yeah. So let's begin in 2019 with your interview that you did with Critical Think, who, just like me, wanted to know if these people, um, referring to flat, he was referring to flat earthers, are really this stupid or are they just trolling? And in response, you said, it's really hard to tell. And you went on to say that you don't think Jaronism is a true believer. You weren't sure, but seemed to doubt that Ranty was a true believer. And you were confident that D. Marble was a true believer. Now, I'm sure you're aware Ranty is no longer a flat earther and claims he did truly believe it. My question for you, has it gotten any easier to differentiate the honest flat earthers from the trolls? and the grifters. And how do you feel about those three, Jaron, Ranty, and D Marble now? Uh, okay. So, uh, if, I mean, if Ranty, Ranty, I, yeah, I know that he has, he has kind of rescinded the, the stance he had before and says that it was true. So I, I'm, you know, I have no reason to believe that's him. him he's being dishonest on that. Uh, so I'll give, I'll give him that. Uh, Let's see who else was there. Um, well, D. Marble, yeah, I, I think he's, I think he's a true believer. Um, uh, I, I, yeah, that's that 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 one. That's a heartbreaker because actually, you know, I, I I like the guy. I thought I liked his personality. You know, it's like you know, he he reminds me of a lot of people in my life. Uh, so it was one of those that it's like I wish I could have gotten to know him personally. And had and and talked to him. I reached out to him a number of times to just like see if we could have a you know like a one on one. But mm -hmm. yeah, he, he wasn't having it. Jaron, uh, yeah, I'm thinking. You know, I'm coming around to thinking that he actually is an a more open minded believer, one that actually still feels that way. But he seems to be a little more genuine in his his curiosity. I still had a lot of doubt after his like obvious uh, and kind of a uh, uh, like public failure with uh, with his with that documentary that and his you know his own personal experiment kind of blowing up in his face, oh. um, yeah. and the fact that he still tried to find a way of 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 sticking with it that really got gave me the sense of like this is not scientific exploration this is this is more of a grift but I know there seems to be a genuine sense of of belief yet curiosity in him so uh, I'll, I'll i'll cut him some slack on that i think he i think he's a real believer true believer but um has a lot much like a person of faith when it comes to you know uh, any other religious type belief it's like you have this core part of you that you believe though you still have this curiosity about things but it's in your it's in your bones and it's hard it's hard to change. And so you really need just like everything, everything to convince you as opposed to some people. It's like, oh, that disqualifies my belief. Done. OK, I don't believe that anymore. Um, other people it takes a lot more. Absolutely. I do believe it's almost pretty obvious that Jaron, prior to the documentary or in the documentary, absolutely believed the earth was flat. Like who would go and do this and run these experiments? Like he seemed genuinely shocked when. Yeah this experiment went the way it did now it's been it's been what five years mm -hmm. who knows yeah there's but there's there's something about the the, the flat earther the, the whatever conspiracy person whatever the conspiracy belief there's something about the flat earther who publicly puts themselves out there trying to actually prove things versus the one that sits back and just hurls attacks and just says you know that's fake. You're lying. This is the way it is. Here's my convoluted science theory that I came up with, but is never boots on the ground actually publicly trying to do something. You know, if you truly believe it, get your ass out on the street and prove it. And then we can see that you're actually trying this as opposed to, well, that, ex uh, that experiment over there didn't prove anything. So how do you know you, you weren't there? You didn't do it. Do it yourself. And those are the ones who are actually out publicly. Maybe they're doing it poorly, but they're out there trying to do it. Those people, I think, actually, you know, are more believers. 
as opposed to the, you know, the keyboard warriors who are just, you know, screaming to the void. Absolutely. There are a few who do the experiments or at least attempt to, but the majority, like you said, I think they are just online and basically just repeating what they heard. Right. Repeating. Which is the same thing. They always accuse, you know, their opposition of just being indoctrinated, just parroting what the scientific elite have told them and what their, you know, what the, you know, the liberal universities have been blah, blah, blah. But they're just doing the same thing, except for it's what they heard on other YouTube videos. So there was one, actually two, but one in particular, Rachi five zeros. Do you know Rachi? I didn't until recently. I wasn't uh, familiar until it, the name started coming up on a regular. You did an interview a little a while back, right? Yeah. She was a flat earther for years making content and doing the experiments on her channel, or at least, you know, doing her best to do the experiments. She was able to change her mind. Now she's back to realizing it's a globe. So you got um, Ranty. Rachi and STST, Speak Truth, Seek Truth, three popular flat earthers who have come back to the globe side. Oh, I didn't know that about Seek Truth, Speak Truth. Okay. Oh, no? No. I, I, I honestly, I don't follow flat earthers. I, I just, I don't actually follow flat earthers. Uh, people send me stuff and that's how I know what's going on. But I don't actually follow them because they're, they're boring. <laughs> you know, they, they just are. <laughs> so I didn't, I didn't know that. I used to have interactions with that person and yeah. What's interesting about those three in particular, they're proof people can be reasoned out of it. And there's so much content out there addressing and debunking every single flat earth claim at this point, you can't avoid it. But it begs the question, why only those three? I mean, I'm sure there are more, but out of the people on, why only those three? Why do you think that those three were able to realize and admit that they were wrong while so many others with equal access to the information remain flat earthers? I think for a lot of flat earthers, the flat, the flat earth belief isn't just a belief for them. It's, it's a personal identity and to rescind who you are at the core is, is it's, it's, it's really, it's like, it's like, it's like leaving your family. You know, it's just like, it's such, it's, it's a, a big move. There, there are some people who can, I think, and maybe this is true for the, these individuals, um, that they separate their own, like the who they are, the what they are from, like what they think, you know, and there's maybe there's a separation. Uh, and so when you, when you uh, confront them on what they think, uh, they're able to take the ego out of it, take the personal out of it and listen to a certain degree, you know, and, and take in information and, that change can happen. But when you try to tell someone that they at the core are, are wholly incorrect, it's if it's something that they feel they just, they are in their being they're that transcends information that transcends, you know, fact it's, it's so I think it's much harder for those uh, deep, deep core identity believers it happens a lot, even in politics. You know, that's why some people, it doesn't matter how much you tell them that this isn't what happened. They're just so entrenched because it's not about what they think. It's about who they are. And then there's the grifters, of course. And then there's the ones who are just like, you know, keep moving. I'm, you know, you're, you're messing with my money right now. Keep, keep moving. Yeah. One thing about what you just said. Yeah, I agree with the identity. I think it, you mentioned politics, which is definitely a good analog, but so is, I think, religion. There's so many people that have built their whole lives and community around their church or, or whatever it may be. I've spoken about this before, but there's plenty of examples of priests or pastors that struggle admitting and they seem to go on because they would lose you know, friends, family, community if they were right. to leave. Yeah, I find that I find that fascinating. I've, I've, I, I would really like to speak to someone who's still in it of, of like, yeah, priests, pastors, uh, you know, uh, rabbis, uh, you know, considerably, there's, there's always an interesting relationship between the community, you know, and the, and the belief, uh, when it comes to, to Judaism, it's like, you know, some guy, I've, I've, I spoke to some, I had a friend who would say that, you know, it's like, yeah, I don't, I don't believe, but this is part of my culture. And that's a different, you know, it's a different thing. Uh, but someone who's like, you know, a practicing Christian pastor who, who's stuck in that, this is who I have to be, even though I don't, I don't, I, I find that, I find that fascinating. 
you know, and, and kind of tries, you know. I mean, that has to be next level compared to just leaving flat earth, but yeah, same idea. Yeah. You mentioned grifters. I think even they may have believed that at some point, you know, I, I don't know how many people that are just like, I'm going to start pretending to be a flat earther and never were. Yeah, well, I would. Only example of that one I would say would be probably a Candace Owens, who who has currently decided she wanted to start acting like she might be doubting the ferocity of the Earth. So, I think it's just because she needs a new. So? I think she needs a new revenue stream. Any press is good press, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so her, I think, that, yeah. So her, she is one that I, I think is probably just like, yeah, I need a new revenue stream, or like, a, who is it? Uh, you know, uh, Logan Paul or whatever one of them that said, hey, I need a, little, a brief revenue stream, so I'm going to have a little taste of this for a minute and act like I'm part of this. But uh, most of them, no, I think they got into it legitimately. Whether or not uh, it was a deep belief for them. Uh, and after, I mean, um, yeah, they get to a certain point and they're like, yeah, this, okay, but keep it, keep, keep the train going. You know, it's a job, you know, or a career or whatever. You suggested that globe deniers tend to avoid doing certain experiments because they're afraid of what they'll find. If that's true, you're implying that on some level they know they're wrong or at least aren't as confident as they seem. Yes. I think, yeah, I think this is what we're currently witnessing with the final experiment. So in my opinion, this is the reason why there are so few globe deniers looking to participate and why instead of being excited that they're going to finally show us that it's guarded by NASA with guns and that they can <laughs> shove it in our face, there's no 24 hour sun. That's not what's happening at all. It's exactly the opposite. It's hard to get anyone to go. And instead of saying, oh, wait, you just wait and see, they're already backtracking on the things yeah. they've said in the past. What do you make of all that? I think I, I've mentioned this in a, in a video a, a couple of weeks ago uh, when I when I finally chimed in on it. Uh, yeah, they, the, they, they put too much, they put too much uh, power into Antarctica. You know, they, they, they kind of, they kept, you know, it was like, it was like a red line for them. It is impossible. It's, it's a, there's a, a impenetrable ice wall. That's the, the South pole is a ring going around the world. It's, it's uh, protected. It's a no fly zone. And uh, they have, there's no 24 hour sun. They just lie. All the videos always edited, blah, 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 blah. And so now, uh, and, and for years people have said, you know, you know, just go. I know uh, uh, Wolfie uh, uh, sixty twenty had offered a long time. You know, many times like, hey, I will, I will fly you down here so you can see the, you know, the southern celestial pole. You can do all these things. I will, you know, and no one took him up on it. And so this final experiment thing is, you know, is calling them to the carpet uh to either put up or shut up and so they're they're, they're mostly they're, they're just shutting up they're not they're good they're trying to uh stay quiet and yet somehow not shut up they're they're going to dig they're going to seek to diminish this they're doing that now um they're trying to act like they never really that antarctica was never that big deal i just saw the other day that dubai i guess put out something saying that that it's like you know whether or not there's a 24-hour sun doesn't really affect anything i'm like mm. Yeah, so so you're backtracking off of this, you know, red line that was out there. Uh, I'm personally, I'm hoping, I'm I'm hoping for them to find to try to find a way of making Antarctica work. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm I want to see the twists and turns they try to come up with new science to uh, somehow make it possible in their so-called model for you know for a, a 24-hour sun to work. Um, that's just gonna be fun to watch. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to, originally I was going to ask you, what do you think will come of it if it does actually happen? Uh, and, but you already answered that question. in, like you said, a video from a couple of weeks ago, do you think though, it will actually happen with flat earthers as being part of it? Oh, oh, oh happen with flat earthers being, well, I'm, what's the current status of, of, of Jaren? Do we know, do we know what the current status? I should know that, but I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, I think that'll, you know, that'll probably happen, you know, with him, but they are already trying to, you know, they're going to, so the three things are diminish it, act like it's not of any value, uh, 
ostracize anybody who's involved with it as a, you know, that isn't a flat earth that uh, is as a shill, uh, as a poser. They were never really part of it. They were just a CIA plant, whatever, blah, 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 blah. Um, mm. Hope that no one, no flat earther goes. If no flat earthers goes, then they can just say, you guys made that up. You guys just like, you guys lied. Everything's lied. So if they get no one to go, they get universal denial. They can, they can do that. Uh, hope that it crashes and burns. Somehow it doesn't happen, you know. Some controversy happens, keeps it from happening. Uh, so I started off with three. I think I'm like at six now. Uh, but uh, and, then, and but like so, and my hope is that uh, if it since I think it will go through, is to watch the 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 twists and turns and the machinations they come go through in order to uh, somehow make twenty four hour sudden networks in their model. You know, to them, they won't have any proof of it. They'll just be able to declare it. Yeah. You know? So you think it will happen, okay? Like I uh, said to Katz, I feel like we've done this already. The, the Behind the Curve with Bob Nodell and his ring laser gyroscope. $20,000 yeah. gyroscope, proved rotation by a flat earther. And what happened? Right. Some people said, you know, he was never a flat earther or, or the experiment was flawed. It, was, it didn't put an end to flat earth. Oh, so. yeah. They immediately start trying to undo their own experiment. That's where that's where they they completely lost any scientific uh, bona fides that they may have earned by trying to do it. Um, this is the same thing happened with, with, with Jaron to a certain degree. It's like, you go out and you do this experiment. Great for you. Awesome. I'm glad you did that. Power to you. And then when the experiment doesn't go the way you want, you say, Oh, that wasn't right. I shouldn't have done it that way. But it's like, okay, you're all right. We've been focusing on content creators, but what about the nearly anonymous viewers and commenters? At some point you went a long time without engaging them in the comments. They are a tiresome lot. They, you know, they, they are there. It's, uh, well, the thing is, is when I find myself, uh, putting too much energy into something, uh, like that, uh, I, it's, it's, it's not healthy for me. Yeah. It's like when I'm just, I hate repeating myself. Uh, but at the same time, I, you know, I'm, I'm that. I can be that guy in the little meme. It's like, you know, when are you coming to bed? I can't. There's somebody wrong on the internet, you know. And, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yep. Uh, yeah, and so it. when I when I find that my uh, found my 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 attachment to the argument uh, was too important, uh, I just said, you know, I said had to separate myself from it. It's not about the when it wasn't about the actual exchange of ideas or the actual attempt to, uh, to explain something to someone, it was just in like the, 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 the win or just a like, you know, insult the troll kind of thing. It's like, it wasn't good for me as a person. Uh, I just had to, you know, reassess and it's like, okay, yeah, I'm not doing that. And even now my exchanges when it comes to, uh, the, the content, uh, the comment threads, I kind of have a rule of if, if it's, if I think it's going to take me more, if I'm going to spend 20 minutes on a reply, I'll make a video out of it. <laughs> you just like, I'll just, I'll use it as a topic for a video because it's like, it's not worth it. So most of the time I'm like, yeah, I'll just do a, you know, short thing or send them a link to something I already did. I already talked about it. There you go. We're not, we're not doing this. I, my time is, is worth too much. Yeah. So. Do you worry about that you're being trolled anyway, and it's a complete waste of your time to even spend those five ten minutes? Yeah, and there's some that I, you know, there's some that I know my uh, my troll radar is, you know, pretty pretty high, you know, and so you you get someone comes in and you just you say something back to them and they say something else. I'm like, okay, I see where this is going. Thanks, take care. You know, it's I don't I don't have time for you. Uh, you know, I have my regulars who come in. You know on every video and engage. And sometimes I'll, it's almost like an office worker that you don't really like, but you kind of like the, the, the poke at them a little bit just to see what they're going to come up with this time. Yeah. You know, it's like, Oh, Hey, how you, how you doing, John? Uh-huh. Sure. Yeah. Tell me about that. You know, and you do that back and forth, you know, and it's just, you know, so I have some, some commenters like that, when they come on, it's just my way of going, oh, they're just reaching out saying hi. Okay, we're going to have this little thing for a little bit, and then, and then we'll, we'll go on. And they're just trolls, <laughs> but, you know, they, they need a friend. <laughs> they need yeah. someone to talk to. I recently came across a video, it was actually from five years ago, by the channel Today I Found Out. 
It's pretty popular. He's got like 3 million subscribers. I have no idea how many subscribers he had five years ago, but nevertheless, he posted a poll. The video is about a poll that he posted, which received 54,000 responses. Okay. And there was three choices in the poll. 9% of the respondents stated, get this, I believe the world is round, but sometimes say online it's flat. 2% stated, or not stated, but chose the second option, which was, I believe the world is flat and advocate this position online. And then the remaining 89% stated, neither applies to me. All right. So 89% of people are not online advocating that the world is flat. But of, but of the 11% or 6,000 respondents out of the 54K, which claim that they have said online that the earth is flat, 5,000, according to, if you go by this poll, 5,000 of them were trolling, while 1,000 <laughs> actually believed the earth is flat. Now, obviously, this needs to be taken with a huge pinch of salt So for, for so many reasons. This, but does that surprise you as much as it did me? Could that even be reasonably close to accurate? In your opinion, yeah, reason. Yeah, I don't know if that can be. I have a hard time thinking that is close to accurate. I don't know the 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 demographic of the channel, I and mean, maybe they you know attract a certain uh, you know a bunch. But uh, yeah, I'd have a hard time thinking that there is that many uh, that higher percentage of people who were saying it. They were just just straight trolling. Um, I think I mean this was, but this was five years ago. It was five years ago, and I can say five years ago, I got so many more comments on my video. Even if I got the same amount of uh, uh, views, the level of comments that were on the videos were were really high compared to now, where they're almost, you know, they're almost equitable. Like, you know, it's like, oh, it's got 4,000, and it's got like, you know, it's got like 800 or something comments, as opposed to having like 4,000, and somehow it's got like, you know, 18, 1900 comments, even though there's only 4,000 views. There was just a lot more activity in the comment threads. And so I think it may have been true at the time that people are like, yeah, this is a fun thing to, to do right now. The people I have, I get a lot fewer comments, and I have a higher percentage of, of Globe supporters on my comments now. But the ones who are, uh, flat earthers are more, I, they seem to be more just true blue flat earthers. Um, they don't stay around for as long. They just kind of say their thing and people get back. They do a slight back and forth and then they bail because they're not there for the fight. They're trying to say their point and the trolls stay around, man. <laughs> you know, they keep it going. <laughs> and so I think uh, maybe maybe five years ago at the at the height of just like the the freshness of, of flat earth, it was like, yeah, let's 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 run with this. But I would be surprised if that was the case today. I was surprised by that. that that's a <laughs> big 80% of comment. Uh, yeah, I have a hard time believing it as well. But <laughs> uh, I don't know. All right. I want to make sure we get to the conspiracy bracket. Okay, yeah. Let me... Let's do this. All right. So for those watching, this is tournament bracket style, similar to the NCAA when they do the, the tournament of 64 and everyone fills out these brackets. It's a match play, so 1v1 conspiracies. <laughs> Jerry and I, we spoke briefly before this call, and I don't really know exactly how do you rank or <laughs> judge a winner between two conspiracies. So perhaps you should consider things like popularity, longevity, creativity, I guess. Uh -huh. And just pick based on your gut, maybe considering those things. What do you think? Okay, so not necessarily like uh, between the two, the likelihood of being true or... Or between the two, the most absurd. I, I'll, I'll, I'll come up with an internal standard, a little gut, a gut standard, and we'll just we'll go from there. Okay. 9-11 versus JFK. 9-11 versus JFK. Uh, let's see. Let's go with 9-11. Because 9-11 was a conspiracy on one level. People conspired to do this thing. So whether, you know, you can argue where the conspiracy lies, lay, whatever... But people had to conspire. They, that was organized. Um, so whether or not it was governmental or whatever, I'm giving it the nod for being uh, uh, at least factually a conspiracy. Does that make sense? So we got 9-11 moving on to the next round against the winner of this. We've got Bigfoot in the classic photo of a man in a, <laughs> in, in a, yeah. in a costume. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> and they, uh, and the aliens built the pyramids. Uh, that's uh, well. So I was gonna say one thing. Uh, like my first thought, and I think I'll still go with it, is aliens built the pyramids. Uh, one because it's fun. You know, so I, I kind of like the. It's, it's like oh, it's kind of fantasy. Uh, though I would love the idea of there being a large primate in North America like that. I would. I think it would be awesome. But sorry, we just don't have one. Because uh, I'm I'm a fan of uh, large primates. Uh, but uh, I'm gonna go with the. Uh, pyramids aliens beat the pyramids it's just a, it's a romantic kind of concept i like it i like alien anything to do with aliens is, is a winner for me all right <laughs> we've made it to flat earth versus <laughs> this is obama but uh, if you can't tell if you're watching this he's kind of got a lizard face so this represents yeah, he's a, it's a lizard people li- one. lizard people run the lizard the people one or the world uh yeah yeah, I'm 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 just gonna I'm gonna give uh, uh give it to flat Earth right now uh, just because of the like the the personal attachment uh they're they're uh, they're, they're they're scrappy I'd like to see them go far let's see how let's see how they do uh, Blizzard people I've always just found that kind of boring You said it I agree I would definitely would have won flat Earth here I think that was a, an easy win for them Ooh. All right we've got five G causes cancer I suppose against fluoride in the water which i assume you've heard of but maybe yeah not. fluoride in the water um i'm gonna go with fluoride in the water because it's just it's such a it to me it's always been such a funny conspiracy you know it's a, it's always been just like the most kind of weak conspiracy so it's just it's just hilarious to me five five g is that's that's just that's cartoonish for me. This like, oh, if I, you know, but yeah, I, I like, I like old school. I'm going to go old school fluoride and uh, fluoride in water. I like that. This one confused me a little bit because there is fluoride in the water. That's not a, yeah, that's, not that's a the thing. It's like, and some, and some place in, and I don't, for those who don't know, some places they actually have to reduce the amount of fluoride in the water because there's too much natural fluoride in the soil, in the water. So they have to take it out because it's actually to a certain level. It's kind of dangerous. So yeah, here we are right side of the bracket. Round one. All right. Who do we got here? Chemtrails. What is that? Oh, it's microchips in water and a vaccine. Oh, okay. So, okay. Interesting. Um, chemtrails, chemtrails. Dun, 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 dun. Um, let's go with, let's go with the microchip tracking. I, hard to say. Let's go with that one. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, um, I, I find chemtrails. It, it seems pointless to me. You know, it's just it's just like it's like a pointless contra- uh, one. It's like, why why are oh oh look at the there's the look at the chemtrails out today. It's like, well, why why are they out today? What what is what is the reasoning behind this idea that hey look today they decided to do chemtrails today? It's like it's because you're doing your your video. You, they decided you you know a lot of times they're out there. They go okay, we're out here to talk about. Uh, how the uh, how the Earth is flat, and oh look at this! All of a sudden, there's these chemtrails. I'm like, they, they don't. Why would they care or know? That's just it's just stupid. So yeah, I have just a hard time with the with the mechanism and reasoning behind chemtrails. Uh, so at least with microchip tracking, you can say, okay, there's a point. I do find the chemtrails pretty funny. But the, the chemtrails, whoever is behind it, well, they'd be getting poisoned too. <laughs> Yeah, they do. They only do only do assignments over places they don't live. It's like you know where you eat, you know. So it's so it's like. All right. What's next, up next here? matchup is Area Fifty One against MH Three Seventy, the Malaysian airline flight. Oh come on! Yeah. How is this? How is this even a matchup? Area Fifty One just rocks compared to that one. Come on, are we? Are we real here? Are we actually? Are we actually doing this? <laughs> Area Fifty One didn't even take put their A team out. They let the guy on the bench walk out and take care of Flight Three Seventy. They're just like, nah, yeah, let's, let's go. We have very realistic brackets here at Euromop Studios. This is what happens in the NCAA first round. It's just a bunch of maskers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you get you get this this number one seed against the sixty two. You know, like come on, they're just not. It's not happening. Exactly. Next matchup, moon landing was fake. One you've addressed mm-hmm. many times, actually. And uh, the other one that's, is that's, uh, the pandemic. That's 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 home. That's 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 old school. I'm sticking with them with the moon landing because that's just that's that, that's that's just much more. It's more fun. People who promote it aren't as tiresome as the the hoax people. Yeah, they were they were the the higher seed in this matchup for sure. Yeah, yeah, totally. Ooh, yes. this one. All right. 
Next one. This one's a little bit more even match up here in the seating. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Yeah, see, I, I know some, I, I, you know, I, Illuminati's, I have some personal friends who, who, who have always been like Illuminati, like not believers, you know, to a certain degree, like there's, that there's a big conspiracy. So there's, there's a, there's a home, there's like a, a, like a home team part of that. It's, it's, you know, regrettably, it's actually kind of a large popular conspiracy in the, in the black community. So there's part of that, that's. Yeah, it's, it's, that's 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 dear that. to me. <laughs> Q is so destructive, though. It's just so corrosive. I think um, I think I'm gonna have to give it to Q just for the the cultural impact uh, that it yeah. that it came in. It mean it's not as big. It's not as it doesn't have the history. It's not as uh, deep, you know, Illuminati is is deep, and it's it's a in a, in a lot of things, you know, supposedly connect back to that. But all that is just like that's backroom, uh, you know, elite kind of conspiracy. Q is guerrilla. It's guerrilla warfare. It's 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 corrosive and bad. It's I think it's it's yeah. I'm gonna go with that one just for its cultural impact. The impact it had, uh, and still does to a certain degree. I agree. It definitely had more of an impact. This is very fringe, but it'll be. I think Illuminati conspiracies will be around long after this is forgotten. Yeah, this is this isn't hurting Illuminati's rep. Illuminati, you know, they're like, okay, that's fine, you know. But when history, when history will show us, you know, it's like that's fine. You get one, you get this one, but don't worry, you're not gonna even gonna be here next year. You're not gonna be here. We'll still be here every year, every bracket. All right, we're in round two here on the left side. We've got nine eleven and the pyramids. Okay, uh, I'm sticking with the pyramids. Uh, just because, uh, it's, uh, for the ro romance of it. it. Look at that. That's a beautiful shot. I mean, that well, there's, <laughs> we have, we have tragedy and then we have just like, you know, the uplifting of humanity here, you know, the, the help from above, you know, that's just, that's awesome. <laughs> Let's go with that. Yeah, that's good. I know some people hate this conspiracy because it takes away from human oh, ingenuity and I do, but just look at that compared to the two. I, I'm, and I actually, you know, if we'll probably talk about it later. There's some, um, it's a topic I'm going to talk about on, on, on video, but yeah, I don't like it either, but we're talking about conspiracies here. And if, if there's going to be a conspir a terrible, cons a big conspiracy against humanity, I would much rather it be that aliens came. Oh yeah. It's, it's definitely the fun one out of the two. This yeah. one's quite depressing. So our, our old flat earth versus the fluoride. Oh. Yeah, it's, oh, I'm sorry. Flat Earth just you know just eats fluoride's lunch. It's just, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just flat Earth is right now. It's like the the '96 Dream Team or whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It just, over it just pants. It. It's just like, come on, why are you even here? Who let you through? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The matchup between fluoride and 5G didn't even matter. Cause there's no reason <laughs> yeah, <next round>. exactly. <laughs> In this one, we've got again the. We're being tracked by the government via microchips and okay. Area 51. And Area 51. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, I, I, I sh call me biased, but I love me some uh, some Area 51. I love me some aliens, man. Uh, I may not, you know, it's one of those things. It's There's things that you believe and don't believe, and then there's things that you just like. You know, it's, yeah, and it's just like, I have no real belief in like area 51 or aliens and things like that. But it's like, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be mad if that were the case. I wouldn't be mad. Area 51. Yeah. All right. Good deal. Uh, semifinals again, or quarterfinals. Moon landing. Q. Q. Mm. Uh, yeah. I, I don't like having to choose on this one, <laughs> but I do. I think, I think I'm going to go, oh boy. Uh, I think I'm going to go with Q on this one. Uh, I loved, I, you know, I, I'm a big fan of the moon, big fan of the moon landing. Um, but I think I'm going to go with Q again uh, as a powerhouse. It's like these guys play dirty, <laughs> you know, and uh, I think it's had more of an impact. Even though I think probably moon landing denial in a, in a way is probably more accepted worldwide, you know, because worldwide, you know, moon landing denial is a, is a worldwide thing as opposed to Q. 
being, you know, pretty mm-hmm. much a, a, an American thing. Uh, I think Moon Landing has deeper roots, but yeah, I'm going to give it to Q as a bad guy in this. I think he was uh, just upsetting one after the other, just knocking off top seeds <laughs> yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. The top seeds are like, there's controversy. They're like, man, they're cheating. The you know the refs, you know, are on their side. <laughs> Playing dirty. You know, it's like that guy. That guy's <laughs> that guy's actually like 30, and he's like a pro. The third annual. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he shouldn't even be on the court. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like, where, where's his pa- Where's his birth certificate? Where's his papers? I don't think that guy's freaking college. I think he's a pro. But he, they're, they're they're coming <laughs> in. Yeah, is that LeBron James. Who is that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Did he shave? What the hell? He just come on. <laughs> exactly. All right. Q. Moving on. Ooh, we're getting there. Semifinals here. Yeah, we're yeah. This this is this is actually a tough one. Uh, because it's like, you know, it's like, uh, it's like your home, like your, 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 like your favorite dream team, like of of the two, I, I, like I said, if, if one were to be true, I would much prefer it to be the, uh, the, the pyramid aliens, uh, conspiracy, but part of me, it's, it's, it's like, I don't know. Oh, I don't, I I hate to kick out flat earth right now, but I, I think I might have to, uh, because fuck those guys. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, hey, this, this is this is your world. Dude. Yeah, this is this is tough. This is tough. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just I just like the uh, you know of the of. I'll I'll take the I'll take the aliens. I'll take the aliens. Uh, pyramids. Yeah, sorry, flat earthers. Uh, you lost out to uh. Dime Source sci-fi novels. Time to start making Aliens Built the Pyramid videos. I'm, uh, it's, it's my, 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 my guys at, uh, Area 51, though. Uh, I, I'm, that's, it's, it's, it's tough. No one left this one unscathed. It was a rough game. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> it was a rough game. <laughs> you know, but, uh, but Q, you know, they, they just don't have the, they don't have the endurance. Uh, they, they, they don't exercise enough. They they they're they're just on their keyboard all the time, uh, they, and they eat bad food. They just weren't in it for a long haul. Uh, Area fifty one, they know what they're doing. Uh, they're they got that old man strength. They they came in. They did they did the job. Yeah, Area fifty one. Oh yeah, professionals all the way. <laughs> they're professionals all the way. <laughs> exactly. Area fifty one, moving on. Sorry, Q, you had a good run. <laughs> had a good run. <laughs> Go get some pizza. You know, it's the consolation prize. <laughs> Have some pizza. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Dude, we are in the final round. We've got the aliens built the pyramids, Area Fifty One, two alien conspiracies. I'm thrilled about that. Who do you got? <sighs> this, actually, these are these are, these are. I you know, it's one of those, it's one of those games that comes up, and you're like, I don't care who wins. I just want a good game. This is going to be awesome, right? You're like, it's, let's just let's go here. Um, but I have a feeling that. Uh, that aliens built the pyramids are just like you wouldn't exist without us man it's like you know <laughs> you know it's like everything you know you learned from us and you know so it's like I, I taught you everything you know but i didn't teach you everything i know <laughs> you know it's like, a, so that is a good point man that actually <laughs> might actually be literally true <laughs> you know so so <laughs> so so let's uh so yeah it's uh, i love them both but uh, i'm going with uh aliens and pyramids man aliens and pyramids whoa wait a minute i thought you were going with area 51 no 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 sorry so no i'm going sorry i'm going aliens a- a- aliens built the pyramids they're they're the ones they're just they're the they're the, they're the deep masters i think they're the they're the the the, the great masters oh. of oh I thought you were saying. I thought you were saying that you know the Roswell episode that what was it, in the fifties or whatever. I thought you were saying mm-hmm. that if it wasn't for that incident and whether whether whatever it was that happened and crashed, right, 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 right. If right. it wasn't for that, no, I just yeah. Be I, 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 I can understand that. I can understand that. Or I'm I, sorry. I, I I slipped into a world where these things were true for a second, and so the aliens. I actually did. I, it's early in the morning for me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, so the aliens uh, that built the pyramids were actually uh, talking smack about the to the aliens who were at uh, Area Fifty One. All right, we have a champion. <laughs> Boom. So, 
Yeah, there we go. I yeah. like that bracket. Congratulations on that bracket. Do you you had to, did you have it generate? Did you just look up for a bunch of different things, or did you pick those brackets uh, specifically yourself? Cool. I, I took some of the ones I used with cats. Did you do the matchups yourself? Did you decide the matchups? I literally did, and I picked them very carefully, thinking about <laughs> how it's gonna. <laughs> I, I thought about this way too much. You should use this use this as, as much as you can. I think there's uh, there's probably just yeah, uh, an insight into the person you're talking to by going through this. You know, it's like like a Rorschach test of <laughs> of of conspiracy. <laughs> um, I, I you know, ask me again in like in 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 five years this this bracket and see where I am and and it's just you know, I'll probably give you different give you different answers just because I'm a different person I think about these things differently, but uh, yeah, interesting. I like that. That was nice. Thanks for that. That's cool. I'm glad. Yeah, I uh, I'm gonna try and do some different things like this with each of my guests to to make it more interesting and these kind of random conversations while we do it. It's, it's very cool. I was gonna ask you. If you had to pick one of these to be potentially true, you know, it's not, none of them are, are likely to be true, but if you had to pick one that maybe could be true, what would you, what would you say? That maybe could be true. Hmm. Of all of them, not just our last final guys here. All 16. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. That's, uh, da, 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 da. like area 51. I mean, I don't think it is because I, I I know the facts behind it, but that's kind of, that's the kind of thing that could not necessarily Area Fifty One itself, but some incident like that could be true. Um, the chances are in, as, literally astronomical <laughs> because of of how far things are in space and the chances of anybody you know encountering another planet with life, blah blah blah. Uh, but if something like that could happen, like you, uh, an incident happens and the government manages to get to it and they cover it up, you know, because that's a literally a, a very impactful, culturally impactful thing to have alien life show up. So something like that could happen. Um, things like, you know, people being lizard people or, uh, yeah, yeah, whatever. Uh, oh, yeah. There are some you could scratch off right away. And there are others that have a non-zero possibility yeah of yeah like i would love the idea like i said earlier for there to be a, like a bigfoot and I, I you know i'm a big you know because that's just nature that's just the idea of that a large primate somehow evolved near or in the united in in this area and and is still around you know that's kind of like that'd be kind of cool that there's a large primate in north america that we never knew about um that's not mm -hmm. horrifying it's not you know it's not tragic for humanity it's just like oh cool that's just the diversity of freaking life on this planet so that would be great that's not it <laughs> that's a guy in a suit i was just gonna say yeah. at least that doesn't violate all the laws of physics and nature right loch ness monster fine it doesn't violate any laws oh sure there's you know there there's the life really deep down in 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 the in the in oceans or whatever now it being in Loch Ness that's a whole other thing but there being like sea creatures and things in the the world that live that we don't know and we just now discover that's not mm -hmm. that's not horrible that's not that's not a horrible thing something being incredibly big like that would be very rare but um yeah that that I won't have a problem with that at all um and of course there are a lot of conspiracies that are that happen in terms of you know businesses conspiring to, you know, do something about regulation, you know, you know, moneyed people m trying to manipulate the markets. So like, you know, Illuminati type conspiracies happen, backroom deals, blah, blah, blah. But they're not these like deep, you know, centuries long, you know, secret society of these elite thinkers who are somehow manipulating all history and blah, 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 blah. But but backroom deals, you know, political conspiracies, they happen. When it comes to like 9-11, you know, the idea that the United States knew more than they put on is not, you know, out of the question. The idea that they did it themselves, okay, or that it was a hologram hitting, <laughs> the, 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 it was a missile with yeah. a hologram on it or something. Okay, you're going too far. But if you want to just say like, hey, they knew more than they did. They say they did, and they didn't do enough. Is, is that a conspiracy? You know, 
you know, you can you can take it, you know, certain levels of reality to things. But uh, you know, it being a cruise missile with a hologram of a, of a plane on it, come on. Moon landing one, not impossible to be fake, but it doesn't like we said. It doesn't violate the laws of physics, right? Neither do the aliens ones, in my opinion. Like, and so, right. As a matter of fact, I, I right. have said many times, it's actually likely that there's life out there, according to most or many scientists, yeah. especially when you consider how gigantic the universe is. It would be extremely unlikely that we're alone in this gigantic universe. Whether they've been here or not, it's a different story. And tragic. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I hate that. It's, it's, when it comes to that, because I'm, I'm with you, it's like people, you know, people say, do you, do you believe in aliens? I'm like, what do you mean by do I believe in aliens? You know, it's like, so... Do I believe that alien life, life on other planets, can exist? Yes. Do I think it's likely it does exist? I'm, I, I will say right now, Jerry, you know, Jerry Williams, Greater Saber, thinks alien life exists on other planets. What level that life is, you know, that's a whole other thing. Uh, but some type of organism that is self-replicating that we would consider life, yes. Okay. So yeah. So anyway, that one there is one that I don't have. Yeah, I don't have a problem with. It 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 doesn't violate anything. And with moon landing denial, it is it's one of those things that could be possible that they that they yeah. faked it. Or we know that the controversy at the time, it was all there's all it was it was, you know, politics was big, it was the Cold War, you know, things go wrong, uh, and that, you know, contingency plans could have been made to come up with something. We know that governments like you know, like North Korea are always kind of BSing about what they're doing. <laughs> you know, because they it's they have to keep their rep up. So the concept of there being I mean, denying something like a moon landing is not outrageous, but the evidence we have is is something else. Yeah. You're going to be in the next documentary. You're gonna, they're going to someone's going to clip this and they're going to say Jerry Williams, aka Greater Sapien, says it's totally possible <laughs> that the moon landing was fake. <laughs> Yeah, that's what exactly I'm going to say. So do you have one one that stands out? If I force you to pick one, if I told you one of these is true. Absolutely. One is absolutely true. <laughs> Let's go with the one that's uh, fluoride and water. Let's go with fluoride and water. Let's say that, that um, at some point, back way back in the day, it may not be the case anymore, but at some point back in the day when someone said, I want to conduct uh, a psychological experiment on the effects of this of doses of fluoride on populace, and uh, and they did it surreptitiously. They just they they promoted it as dental care, uh, you know, and they 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 were able to swindle people, or whatever, to think it was about dental care, and they got fluoride in the water. Let's just go with that. But <laughs> I say that kind of facetiously, but that's the one that you know that's probably. You know, easiest to do but if i wanted one to be true bigfoot oh yeah okay yeah i, lo I love me some large primates man we are you know we are uh, great apes as far as i'm concerned and so i have i have a soft spot for large primates if you were to ask me which one i would like to be true i would say bigfoot that would be awesome i would love to, to like yeah wow and hopefully we haven't killed them all off the, yeah i would say bigfoot and aliens are two kind of things where if it was on the news tomorrow that it was found out to be true I think that uh, I'd be excited for that. To me, if if uh, like Area Fifty One was real, I would uh, it would be kind of cool. But part of me was like, wait, a minute, we missed out on a lot of stuff because you shut this thing down. You know, we haven't. I would be really, I would be frustrated about that to a certain degree. Um, but Bigfoot, I'd be like, dope. The world would go crazy uh, if Area if aliens showed up, though. That would be scary time. Oh, if they showed up, yeah, it might be like the movies. If it was just revealed that, hey, Area 51 does have an alien because it crash-landed in the 50s, I don't think the world would go crazy. But maybe if it was an Independence Day type of event, that would be the story. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask you about Eric Dubay. Oh, yeah. You've been chipping away at his 200 proofs. You're, you're up to 133, I believe. Yeah. I, was, I recorded another one yesterday. I'm um, going to edit it this morning. I actually, yeah. So I have a, I have a few already kind of uh, scripted out. I just haven't recorded them because I was traveling this last week. Uh, but yeah. Uh, yeah, that guy, uh, that guy just followed me on Twitter just a few days ago. It's, it was very interesting. I just, I popped open, it popped open my Twitter. I'm like, what the hell? It's like... And people are asking me if I'm going to follow him back. No, I'm not going to follow him back. I don't need that, you know, nonsense in my in my feed. It's enough out there in my in my feed. 
But yeah, so yeah, it's been interesting. Yeah, it's yeah. interesting going through those. You've called him an, an idiot, so I know you think he's not that bright, but do you think he's a liar? Um, I would have a hard time thinking that this at this point in his journey that he doesn't know the facts. I would have a hard time believing that uh, that it's anything other than just uh, an enterprise for him now. So I, I I do think at this point, yeah, he's he's got to be. He's just he's just lying. I would I part of me would would. I don't know why, but part of me would feel better if I you just like, yeah, he's a liar, you know, because there's there's a there's a there's a there's a clear understanding when someone's just lying. If there's lying. They're just making the money. They're just that's just what they're doing. It's just a business for them, as opposed to someone who is so unable to absorb facts. You know, it's like I can. Yeah. When when you're talking to someone and they're being so entrenched about something, you look at them, you're like, why aren't you getting this? I don't understand. That's much more difficult than you go, oh, yeah, you're just lying. I got it. I know where I stand now. We, you know, <laughs> the universe makes sense. You're just lying. So uh, so I, I, yeah. I have a feeling it's just it's just it's just a lie. At this point, because you said he, he's been around and heard so many arguments, but th that could kind of be true so for a lot of flat earthers. <laughs> yes. Um, but most flat earther, you know, I, I don't, I have no idea what kind of money he's made off of this thing, but I, you know, I know he's, mm -hmm. I, I also have a hard time with anyone who has traveled the world, not under, you know, believing that the world is flat. I, you know, when, when you're, when your world is just horizon to horizon for you, I can kind of see that the shape of the world doesn't matter to you. It, do, it, it doesn't have any effect on you whatsoever. Sure, you know, yeah, you heard about, you know, satellites and this and that, and all, supposedly those help you, blah, 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 blah. But your world is still kind of isolated. But if you're, if you're any kind of world traveler, if you go anywhere that, you know, and then you look at a map, you kind of go, come on, how did I get, how did we get there in that, in that length of time? How did we go from here to here? This, why did we take that path? It's, it's, yeah, I have a hard time anyone uh, international in their, in their world. And especially anybody who's been in the Southern Hemisphere. It's like, come on, you travel in the Southern Hemisphere. It doesn't work in a freaking flat Earth model. So. You mentioned travel. Were you implying that he's traveled? Well, I, I mean, he, I, I'm assuming he's, you know, I know he's, where is he? In Malaysia or something? I believe. Oh, oh, I so, believe. yeah, yeah. I think he's, he was a Westerner that he's like an expat. Like he's. He's like in, yeah, like Singapore or something. He's yeah, yeah. So, so I just so I know there's min, at minimum that, <laughs> you know, and so that just yeah, I have a hard time, you know, unless 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 I'm incorrect about that. I, I believe he's done some traveling and has and has uh, shown up at different places. So, yeah, I have a hard time believing he doesn't really know the truth. But I I find the um. His 200 proofs, his, you know, most of which are, you know, copied from, you know, old people that didn't have any evidence at the time. But uh, I find them very interesting uh, as an intellectual exercise. Frustrating as hell um, and laughably dumb sometimes. But uh, it's it's going back to what we talked about earlier. It's, a, it's an avenue because people say, why are you doing this? You're not convincing anybody. It's like, yeah, you the people who need the convincing probably aren't going to be convinced and people who already understand. It's, there's an intellectual exercise of like, how do I explain this? You know, for me, it's like a lot of people have, a number of people have done these, you know, done these proofs and they tend to blow through them. You know, they tend to, you know, do them very quickly. And I don't actually watch other people's proofs because I don't want to be kind of like corrupted by what other people have done. But when I, I saw, I think, Professor Dave did one. I didn't watch it because I did not want to get my, you know, any inspiration for my answers from somebody else. But I saw it was only like, an, you know, an hour and a half long or something like that, which tells me he was breezing through them pretty quickly. And I, I try, you know, I try not to do that. I try to give each one of them at least a few minutes if I can, uh, just because there's usually a seed of, of reason behind them, like a misunderstanding 
uh, out, out, other than outright absurdity. There's some things that are just like like the ones that I just did, uh, 34 and 35 that I, I just recorded, is, are just absurd. <laughs> but uh, but other ones are there's a there's a there's a hint of scientific reasoning that was misunderstood or or is purposely being exploited. Uh, and so then I like to look into that and say, you know, because if you don't know these things, if you don't know the science behind it or the history behind it, it makes perfect sense the way it's being being told to you. But then if you look anything deeper, you go, oh. Yeah, the reason that it sounds like it makes sense because it's based on something that makes sense, and then it's being twisted like this. And so, for me, it's it's an exercise in in getting out of the reflexive "that's wrong" part of me because I just hear something go, oh, "Yeah, that's wrong," uh, and then try to figure out, okay, you got to it instantly. Back up and figure out how you got there and the reasoning behind it being wrong. So then you can explain it to somebody, and that's the that's the thing that makes it. Interesting, you know, and sometimes it's it's difficult. Sometimes I look at it and I go, how do I do this without having a 40 minute video? <laughs> you know, it's like, because I don't want to put 40 minutes of recording on this thing. And and I literally had some where I, I always keep a word count thing going. And I'm like, I've written 20,000 words. I can't do this what? one. I get I get certain distance wow. through and I go, I go, ah. No, I, I don't want to do. That's like you're 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 thinking too much. You're you're too high end. You're 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 talking to. You're having a freaking TED talk on this. You need to get it back down to what <laughs> really matters. You know, trim it down. Um, and so there's just that kind of like you know intellectual exercise. It's it's the same thing you know, like me hitting this punching bag every day. It's like something that I can do for for my brain uh, to just to to work out a little bit. And so. Uh, deconstructing those as pointless as they are to a certain degree <laughs> uh, is still uh, a, a fun exercise for me. And, you know, every so often I get to do something fun and snarky and, you know, insulting, you know, <laughs> in there as well. Yeah. Cause I am still in the end, kind of a prick. <laughs> you do have a nice little subtle jokes that I do get, which I appreciate. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I put some deep cuts in there sometimes. I put some deep cuts. I'm amazed that some people are, they, they get them. I'm like, okay, you're you're an old school nerd. Good for you. You got that one. All right. I think I get them. Maybe, maybe there's some things <laughs> I missed. But I, I feel like I, I get a lot. Yeah. Something you just said reminded me of something I wanted to say earlier in our conversation and totally forgot and was annoyed, but I moved on anyway. When we were talking about Dee Marble and you said he, you, you reached out to him, you were hoping to have a one-on-one. -on -one. I asked Katz this question, and I, when we were talking about Dee Marble, I was going to ask you this question. Do you think that if you had the opportunity to sit down with him one-on-one, -on -one, maybe for a session or multiple sessions, would you be able to convince him that the Earth is a globe? Probably not, because um, he seemed pretty. He seems pretty entrenched. Well, seemed. I don't think he's doing videos anymore, so I'm not going to say where he is now. But uh, he seemed pretty entrenched. I think there's a bit of identity in there. I think he enjoyed being like the the rebel, you know, the the and I, I would call him a trendsetter for a long time. There, there was there were arguments that he was making that I never heard anybody say, and then a couple weeks later, everyone was repeating it. You know, it was like he he was like a like a bellwether of flat Earth for a while there, and I think he enjoyed that. Yeah, so I don't know if I could, um, but I think I could. I could probably, kind of, maybe destigmatize education for him, you know, and like the, you know, like get a, get a, get a, maybe humanize the intellectualism because I think he has this impression of like you know, college educated people and and you know, higher ups and elites being like you know thinking that they're better than than the regular people and you know and i think honestly i think if we would have had conversations there would at least been a, a a respect for uh the hopefully it's the intellectual rigor that actually goes into trying to figure things out as opposed to just being this thing of of that you know of the of the elites um yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. I did reach out to him on a couple of occasions, uh, mainly because he was having issues with, you know, actual kind of racism amongst the, the flat earth community. And so I was I was kind of like, hey, look, you know, I understand how this works sometimes, um, you know, 
you know, you want to talk about it, you know, just on a, on a, on a personal level, you know, just like, you know, how are you, how are you doing? I can tell you're stressing. I, you know, I'll, you know, if you need to talk to somebody, I'm, I'm, I'm here. And he's just like, he wasn't having it. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so I was, I was hoping, you know, we could get out of this kind of, uh, kind of alpha relationship we we had alpha conflict relationship but he he wasn't having it so oh, i hope he's doing all right like you said i don't think he's posted videos in a long time but it seemed like he had a good head about him i'm sure he's you know doing doing well as long as he you know his health is keeping up you know then the world isn't nothing happened tragically i got a feeling he landed and just doing good hopefully he stopped making videos because he just got over the or he, he figured it out but when i spoke with rachie and she, you know she was talking about how what it took for her to change her mind or to come around to the to reality. And she said, there's a flat earthers have a huge bias, or at least she said she did that. They want the earth. Once you're a flat earth, you want the earth to be flat. They kind of block out the arguments that don't agree with their worldview. And until they're ready to accept the information and really listen, instead of just hear the information, really listen and, and consider it. There's no, there's no convincing them until they're, ready to have right. their mind change yeah they have to be ready i i understand i believe that completely yeah she said chat gpt actually played a big role in that I mean, maybe it's easier to when you're talking to a computer program you don't feel like there's any condescension or i don't know i yeah. don't even know what the right words are but you know what I'm yeah, saying. yeah maybe right? yeah maybe somehow that, that that's very interesting somehow maybe it takes the ego out of it in a certain certain degree even, you know even though it's still built by people and is fed by information from people um, that's a very interesting, uh, thought I did. I didn't catch that part of it, uh, of that interview only got through uh, a certain degree of it. Um, uh, huh. There's a, there's a little nod for yeah. chat GPT. <laughs> yeah. I almost forgot. I did want to ask you, how are you feeling about the future of your channel? You've been, you've had many breaks over the years, right? You've yes. took a two year break pretty recently. Then you, you were back for eight months. Stop yeah. making videos again. Now you've been back for, I think, roughly four. Are you going to be sticking around for a while or are you growing tired of it already? I'm going to stick around for a while. Just might change subject. So, yeah. So I really burnt out for a while there. I was just like, I'm just, and it was partly like the, the balance between like dealing with the, the comment threads and the videos and just, I was, and then just work. I actually, you know, this isn't, this isn't my job. So, uh, it's just a hobby. And so the balance wasn't right. I was burnt out. Um, and so I take, you know, every so often I would take a break all the time, like just like a month here and a month there. Uh, but it always gets to a point where I say, okay, I'm thinking about making a video. Do I, do I want to, do I feel compelled? And if I didn't like, just like have a, like this, this energy to do it, I'd be like, you don't, you don't want to do it. I, I'm not the type of person who says, Hey, do content for the purpose of content, do content because you want to do it. And so for the longest time I would go, I don't miss that. I wouldn't even check the, the chats. I would, you know, I get notices that there would be comments and I would start looking at them. Like I it's like, no, I don't miss it. So I'm okay. And then when it got to a point where I'm like, Oh, you know, like there's some things I like to talk about and I kind of, you know, yeah, I kind of miss the, the outlet. And so then that, that, that kind of, absence was felt then i started doing it again and then things just got busy at work and things like that and that took me off but again when i thought about getting back into it part of me said i don't feel compelled you're thinking about doing it just because it's been a long time not because you want to do it and so until that part of me said okay you want to do it that i start doing it and now you know the the, the fire is kind of back and i'm you know I'm, I'm going at it with a certain amount of verb the only thing that stops me is the fact that i, I get busy with with my my work uh so i'm gonna plow through these uh <laughs> these these 200 as quickly as i can uh and one part of it's a commitment i said i said i would i'm gonna do it you know, and it's getting and now i'm, I'm having new energy for it but after i'm done with those you know i really <laughs> i really want to get get into uh just other stuff. I, I do have a, a one I'm working on that's for the ancient civilizations, you know, on uh, Netflix, uh, you know, basically ancient alien type stuff. Uh, so there's there's one of those that I'm that I'm writing up um, mainly because a friend of mine is kind of a believer and I, I need to try to talk to them, <laughs> you know, which is what got me into this in the first place. I you used know. to believe it. I, I mean, the ancient aliens to me, again, not implausible. 
Right. But I, at least certain aspects, the, the, the concept of, well, sometime in our ancient history, there's, you know, if you want to believe that there is life in the universe, and like we said, it right. seems very likely, it would be unlikely that there's not. Once you take that, well, it's not a huge leap right. to go from there to say, okay, well, then they're, they've been here. We, we've been to other planets. Our right. machines have been, well, we've been to the moon, but our, our machines have been to Mars and explored other planets, at least flew by them. Yeah, so it's not, it's not, it's not completely out, outrageous. And and for me, this the the one on the the attack on the, the tactic I'm using for this isn't about how this is wrong. It's about how this argument is not a good argument, you know. And so, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm doing it this way because whenever me and my friend talk about it, yeah, you know, since we've known each other for so long, there's too much ego involved on both sides, right? And so we don't talk constructively about it. So. I'm I'm saying okay I'm going to put this in video form I'm going to go I'm going to go up at this at my normal kind of meth methodology so that they can understand where I'm where I'm coming from on this uh which is kind of how I got into this in the first place I had a friend who was a big moon landing denier and said you could this you know this got to watch this video this is this is evidence and I saw it and I said okay I'm going to do this make a video so that he understands that what was wrong with this this claim. And that's what started the whole thing. Literally just a conversation with friends and I'm like, "Okay, I'm going to make a video to show you that this, you know, deconstruct this thing." So hopefully I won't get into an ancient aliens fat phase. I don't really don't feel like it, but I want to do this one. And then, you know, I'm I'm an illustrator, I'm a comic artist by by, you know, my old school trade. I don't do that now, but I want to get back into it. So I'll probably kind of turn the channel into more me kind of exercising my artistic end and, you know, having, you know, just being, you know, drawing online, talking about what's going on in the world as I do so, and just uh, use it as an avenue to exercise a different hobby. It's like, hey, I need to put in a certain amount of time drawing every day. I'll just make it into content and that'll be a way for me to make sure I get my stuff, <laughs> get, get stuff done, you know. So that's probably where things are going to go. Once I get through all this with the occasional, you know, deconstruction of some moronic flat earth claim. Yeah. I think that's a great place to end. This is great. Yeah. I really appreciate your time. I hope we can do this again in the future. Like you said, five years, we don't have to wait that long. <laughs> uh, no, we don't have to wait five years. No, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm loving the format. You're doing some great stuff here. Uh, you know, uh, thanks for the invite. I'm sorry it took so long for me to get back to you, but I'm glad we finally hooked up. Yeah, me too. I'm very glad. Uh, yeah, I will keep watching your videos. And like you said, somewhere down the line, I hope we can reconnect. Definitely. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. If you made it this far, do me a favor and leave me a comment letting me know your thoughts on the conspiracy elimination bracket and if I should do more things like this with future guests. Of course, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out some of my other videos. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.